Let me give you a couple of examples. When a top-level domain want to change something in the root system, it could be anything from changing the email address of a contact to changing the IP address of one of its name servers. They need to con they, they contact IANA. IANA is, is authenticating and authorization, and, and, and um, they are authenticating the request and make sure that it is the correct party that do the request that, that has sent in the request. The change is implemented and, if, and then uh, published in either the WHOIS servers or in the root zone itself. So there are several steps there from the provisioning to the publication step. So there might be changes and stress on the and changes needed on the provisioning side on the publication side, in the name service of the TLDs, and finally on the name service of the end users. And those changes, regardless of where they are, might have an impact on the amount of staff, human resources needed, name servers, hardware, routers, switches, and finally budget processes for the organizations that are actually paying for this. <coughs> because even the root system is something that is run by multiple organizations, each one having their own business case, and if they have to change lots of things that they're doing, that takes some time. So the rate of change is what has greatest, much more impact than the actual changes themselves. Um, so the last thing I wanted to talk about is the go back to the IBM issues and specifically look at developing countries. And once again, I think we see on the internet that the developing countries actually have, have it much easier than what the rest of us have because they don't have so much old things. <laughs> they can immediately jump into a system where they use IPv6 and internationalized domain names. Um, myself at home, it has been very, very difficult just being able to handle the characters, the few characters we have used in Swedish, <laughs> um, which are only three, 